Hello there, this is Pikaten, and welcome to the first of the Intermediate Lure Tutorials. We're going to be using Roblox, but if you aren't familiar with the Roblox, then I'm just joining in with these tutorials just to learn Lure, and then most of the stuff I teach you will learn out of Roblox. I won't specifically try and teach anything which is Roblox specific, but, any but to have examples of things working, then I may use Roblox things. To everyone else who's seen the previous tutorials, welcome back. I say back, but it is sort of a the same regular tutorial. I hope you find these ones just as uh, interesting as previous ones, because as you should probably see my previous video if you don't understand why I've changed the format of these. These new tutorials will also be more frequent and less lengthy. So whereas the previous ones are between sort of like 30 and 40 minutes long, these ones are going to be more between 10 and sort of 25 minutes. So we're going to go straight away. You may think I'm plunging you into the deep end here, but we're going to start with teaching you about meta tables. And now, meta tables are often thought of, thought of, to be very difficult, especially by the scripters forum on Roblox and such. But they're not actually. I'm just going to create a script and call it meta tables. They're actually fairly simple. They're just not never explained very well, which is what I'm hoping to correct here. So the first thing to understand how to use a meta table, I'm just going to show you a normal example with a normal table. So if we do this table, we'll create some values. We're going to high is one, uh, lol is two, and then we're going to print t dot high. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, obviously, if you know anything about Lua, it's going to print one because we've set high to one. What happens if we don't print high or lol? What happens if we try and print eat? What happens here? It's going to print nil. But why does it print nil? Why do you think it prints nil? Now, the most obvious thing to assume would be go, well, eat, eat, well, no, eat's not there, let's print nil. But that's not actually what happens. What actually happens is when you press t dot eat, it actually goes, does eat exist here? Well, no, it doesn't exist here, so we're going to look for a meta table. If there is a meta table, we're going to look for it. We're going to have a meta method associated with what uh, you've tried to do. If there isn't one, or if that one's returned nil, we're going to return nil. Otherwise, return whatever the meta method returns. And that's what we get. So what's actually happening is going, well, there's no meta table here. So that's why it's returning nil. So it's not quite as simple as you may think. So that kind of explains what a meta table is, but not really. I'm not expecting anyone to have understood it from there. I'm now going to just demonstrate what a meta table actually is. Well, explain, not demonstrate. A meta table is basically a table you attach to a table. That doesn't really make much sense. A table you it. it that is what it is, essentially. A table you attach to a, another table, your regular table. So you create a regular table and you attach it to a meta table, which then adds extra functionality or can you can change more about the table. For example, like I showed you there, we'll be able to change or make it if you type t dot something, you you don't have that to, you don't have to make that nil. You can change anything about the table you want, or almost anything about the table you want, if you use a meta method with your meta tables, but I'm not expecting anyone to understand that yet because I haven't explained it, so I'm just going to show you how to, so as I said you'll just have to attach a table, we're just going to name this table MT for meta table to a normal table, and to do that you just use the function set meta table then the original table and then the meta table. Now that set us the meta table so if we in this meta table, if we then put high equals ten, well, high equals a hundred, and then if we wanted to go hooray for Roblox Studio crashes, so we're back. As I was going to explain, if we want to do something now, print. And we're going to have get meta table. Don't worry about this get meta table, get meta table function. This function, the argument, will be the original table, and it returns the meta table. And we're going to print this dot high, for example. It's going to get this. 
We've already set the meta table of this to be this, so when we use the get meta table function, it's going to return this. So if we pretend high, it won't return 1, but 100. And so we've got that all sorted out now. So that basically shows you how to set up a meta table and just shows you that it's actually attached to the original table in that way. But what is the actual point of it? Well, you can add extra functionality to a regular table, as I've already explained, and you do this with meta methods. Now, meta methods, if you are familiar, well, if you're familiar with Roblox events, as I've explained in the previous tutorials, in a sort of way, they're like Roblox events in the sense that once something happens, something else will fire. So, like any sort of signal, event, whatever you want to call them, they will. So like the touched event in Roblox fires whenever something touches that part and it will fire a, fun a function associated with that. It's the same with meta methods. Now meta methods are specific things. To get to assign a meta method to a meta table, you have to give the table in question, which is this one, this is the meta table, a key which is a meta method. So remember the key is just the uh the the value that you use to index things so high in this case is the key, is a key of t and one is the value lol is the key two is the value and we need a key to be a meta method all meta methods are prefixed with two underscores underscore underscore they're the meta methods and some they'll all be specific names so one of them's index one of them is add one of them is new index and so on so what we can do now is just give you can do it either way, you can do that, or what I usually do with mess tables is this, and then you can assign this a function. Now all method methods activate under different circumstances. The index underscore underscore index meta table fires whenever the meta table is indexed. Now, as I explained before, the meta table is indexed whenever you access something which isn't in here. So, let me explain again what I mean. If we printed high, or if t dot high, we look at t, the, meta, the script would go t high, okay, just print one. But if we printed something that didn't exist, like do, it looks in t high, no, lol, no do, it can't find do, so then it goes to its meta table, which will be this, and um, because index is in there, and then we go, okay, the meta table has now been indexed. We've tried to look for do, we haven't found it in here, so we're going to try and find it in here, and in that situation, the index meta method will run. And so there's, we can now make this a function. So if we made this function uh, it has the, I, I won't bother with any value uh, with any arguments at the moment but there are arguments function we're going to return lol noob end we're going to save here so what's going to happen let's actually just show it before explaining it oops I think I've I've typed something wrong That's a keyword, that's why. But it's, I'm pretty sure that's not a keyword. It prints lol noob. Now, I've already explained what this happens, but I'm just going to go over it again. So, what's actually happened is it's going to print jeet, or what does that say? Jeeted. Goes, look through the table. Does that exist? Hi, nope, lol. Nope. Okay, so there's nothing in here. We're going to go to the meta table. We're going to try and find GTED in the meta table. And when we when we do that, when it goes to the meta table, that's when the index meta method fires. We've tried to we've tried to index the meta table. We've tried to find something in the meta table. We've we've tried to find GTED as a key in the meta table. So whenever we try and do that in the meta table, this index will uh will run this function. 
And so this function will run, it returns null lol noob. So then it's going to print lol noob because of this. So let's go through it once more. It tries to go, okay, let's find, let's search T for this. Let's search T. Hi, no. Lol, no. Okay, it's not there. Let's go to the meta table, seeing as we've set a meta table for it. Because we've tried to do that, it's going to run the index meta method, which is, which is this function, which is going to return lol noob. And so back to where we started, print is going to print lol noob. Now the index meta method has two arguments. It has the table which you're doing it on. Now this is the original table, so tab in this situation would be T, because this is the table that is associated with the meta table. And if we put an underscore here, then it's the value, um, no, sorry, the, the key which we've tried to index. So the key is GTED in this situation. So we can do all sorts of things. For example, we don't actually have to do high or lol equals to. We can just uh, take that away completely. And for a more long-winded me method of a normal table, if the key was high, then print was it one, else if key was lol, then print two, else if, or just else, return nil. Nope, sorry, I didn't mean to print, that's wrong. So we're going to return one, return two, return nil. Of course, printing would also work, it just wouldn't turn anything, so it would print that, and then it would, then it would just uh, print nil afterwards. So we're going to print t.lol. We're going to print t.lol, except lol doesn't exist in t, and now see what happens. It's going to print 2, and I'm going to go through the workings of this so you can understand it some more. It goes, OK, let's, let's print t.lol. Let's go to t. Well, lol's not in T, in fact nothing is in T, so we're going to go to T's meta table. We've now indexed the meta table while trying to look for lol, which means this index is going to run. The key is lol, so we're going to go, OK, is key is high? No. Else if key is lol? Yes, that's the key. Now we're going to return to 2. So we've returned to, so it prints 2. If we didn't do that, we could do something, can, we could return something else here, so if it was enough, we could print it doesn't exist and we just did this rather than printing nil we'd now we'd print it doesn't exist because it's gonna go t not in t we're gonna find here what's the key the key is ritsha nope nope return it doesn't exist print it doesn't exist so this is all a bit pointless but let's have let's have a uh, much more useful example so let's just replace back here high equals 1 lol equals 2 and let's say I'm just going to delete all of this for now let's say we have another value let's say we want to have a value in the table called high lol and whenever we said high lol we wanted it to do a maths thing involving high and lol so let's let's for example go if key is high lol then and then it's going to times together high and lol so return and table is the table we want this so we're going to return tab dot high times tab dot lol and we're going to go return nil otherwise else return nil so what's going to happen here is if we say high lol it's going to return simply tab which will be this because it's set a made table of this dot high times tab.lol. So this is actually a semi-useful application of it. Oops, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to press play here. 
Oops, whoops, that was done, wasn't it? I didn't uh, actually print print t dot high lol. And we're gonna change high to five and lol to ten, so it should print fifty. Fifty as you can see. So this is a useful thing that you can do with meta tables. If you want to just access something inside a table that uh that actually does something rather than having because but without doing that you then have to type print tab dot high plus t times tab dot lol but because we have this function to do it for us we don't need to keep referring to that or if you want to do some something else that's things in the table this is very useful for certain things if you're having a complicated math thing and you only have to define it once rather than keep defining it over and over again when you're trying to do it like just like functions do so I'm just going to cover briefly one more meta method before ending the script and tutorial for today, and that is the new ec new index. Mt dot underscore underscore new index. Now this has a different set of parameters for the function. The first one is the table again. The second one is the key again, but the third one is the value. That is because the new index fires whenever you try and set a new index for the table. S setting a new index for a table is this. T dot high equals ten is not because oops t dot high equals ten is not because higher is exists. We're just changing the value of some an index that already exists, but we're not. Uh, that's that's not what new index is. We want if say just do that again, except not that equals ten. Now this is trying to create a new value in here, and we're going to try to set that to ten. Now this is creating a new index. This will run the new index meta method. It goes okay. Are we going to? Are we go? Actually, I'll, I'll run through it afterwards. So let's just return nil for now. And then we're going to. Well, first of all, we're going to do it after that. Print dot. Let's actually do something more sensible so I can remember how to spell it. It now prints nil because we've returned nil. Rather than what we would do before, if we didn't have this new index meta method in it, it wouldn't. So for example, if I comment this out. It's going to print 10 because that's what we set it to. t.pig equals 10, print t.pig. It's only logical that it picks 10. But if we have this new index mess method, what happens? Well, t.pig equals 10. It's going to go to here. It goes, does it exist? No, no, it doesn't exist. Therefore, we're going to find the new index meta method. If we don't have the new index meta method, okay, fine, set t.pig to 10. If there is, we're going to run this new index function. The table is t, the key will be pig, and the value will be 10. And it's going to return nil. So in fact, it's just going to completely ignore whatever it's doing. It's not going to set any value to anything. What we could do is something a little more interesting, which if you wanted to, for some reason, create a table which didn't do anything, print cannot set any members of this table remembering the speech mark press play cannot set any members of the table and we're going to print nil so that will just say basic error methods so you can kind of see where we're going with meta tables why they're useful you may not fully understand them yet or fully why they're useful yet but these are meta tables i hope you found this useful don't forget to subscribe and like the video i'm going to try and make a video as soon as possible i hope, I hope my explanation was better than other explanations you will have heard or maybe if you haven't heard them hopefully this ex explanation was good enough for the first time and thank you for watching